past year question of economics optional and this question has actually come two or three times in our optional paper okay the question is explain h theory of money supply hello everyone a very good afternoon welcome guys to plutus ias guys today we are going to solve a past year question of economics optional and this question has actually come two or three times in our optional paper okay the question is explain h theory of money supply so guys h theory also known as quantitative theory this h theory is also referred as quantitative theory of money supply or monetarist theory so guys what this theory is all about let us understand step by step in an elaborate manner see guys the theory is that mv equals to pq <clears throat> here m is representing money supply v is the velocity of money right and when i say velocity of money so what i actually mean here is that the frequency of spending a unit currency that means at what frequency people are spending the unit of a currency okay that is the velocity of money p is representing the price level okay price of a thing hmm? and q is the real output op guys i have written in short op is signifying output real output of goods and services fine so mv equals to pq this is representing an equation which is relating the money supply with price or price level how see guys in short run in short run right if we talk about short run you know velocity of the money will remain constant okay velocity of the money will remain constant q is the output and output is not going to change the production is not going to change yes or no guys output is not going to change in the short term period of time the macroeconomic concept is that output changes always in the long run not in the short run so in short run the velocity and output both are going to remain constant they are not going to change and that's very obvious also if you are talking about short run a month two months six months so in six months a company cannot increase or decrease its output so more or less the output is going to remain same same goes with the velocity of the money you know the transaction frequency cannot increase in short run so both of these quantities will remain constant if these two quantities are constant then guys if you observe m is directly proportional to p now what this signifies is that money supply is directly going to affect the price level okay that means if money supply is increased in the economy by rbi talking in the terms of indian economy that if money supply is increased by rbi then what's going to happen then inflationary pressure will be there prices of the things will hike up similarly if money supply is reduced in the economy then what's going to happen then deflationary conditions will prevail and prices of the things will decline down so keeping this equation in mind the monetarist economy the monetarist economist they suggest that the central bank in case of india rbi that the central bank should not increase the money supply or decrease the money supply to a large extent we can say in refined way 
दैट ग्रोथ ऑफ मनी सप्लाई शुड बी कंट्रोल्ड बाय आरबीआई इन सच अ वे दैट इट डज नॉट लीड्स टू इन्फ्लेशन और डिफ्लेशन इन द इकोनॉमी सो ग्रोथ शुड बी सब्जेक्टेड टू द इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ आई एम गोइंग टू राइट इट हेयर दैट आर बी आई हैज टू पी कीप इन माइंड दैट ग्रोथ ऑफ मनी सप्लाई एम एस शॉर्ट फॉर्म आई एम यूजिंग फॉर मनी सप्लाई ग्रोथ ऑफ मनी सप्लाई शुड बी कंसिस्टेंट विद economic growth and guys when i say economic growth i mean long run economic growth growth of money supply should always be consistent with the long run economic growth getting my point so if economy is going to develop it is going to grow at a fast rate in the future so depending on that growth of money supply should be increased okay money supply should be increased if economy is going to develop at a lower pace in the future keeping that thing in mind the money supply growth should also be applied okay so growth of money supply and growth rate of economy in long run they should be consistent with each other then only central bank will be able to counter the inflationary and deflationary pressures in the economy so i hope guys it was understandable to you thank you we'll see you in the next video bye